for today's classic interview. We go back to May 16th of 2012 when I interviewed anti-gay activist Paul Cameron. Paul Cameron was on the show. He told us about why gay people want to rape all young boys, as he said it. And he also, and this went completely viral, admitted that he had some same-sex attractions that he, I guess as he described it, successfully battled. So this was a viral interview with widely known anti-gay activist Paul Cameron. And we go back to that interview today. Let's go back to May of 2012. You may have forgotten this one, or maybe you weren't even aware of our show when we did this one, a real classic. Dr. Paul Cameron is joining me. He is chairman of the Family Research Institute. Dr. Cameron, it's great to have you back on the show again. I want to get right into your comments that you made on Crosstalk with Jim Schneider of VCY America recently. It was kind of a two-pronged comment. Number one, you suggested that President Obama himself, who recently announced support for marriage equality, may be gay himself. And then you also talked about uh, that the goal of the homosexual movement is to make every little boy grab his ankles and every little girl to give it a try. Let's start with the first topic first. Why do you think President Obama may be gay himself? Uh, uh, first of all, as everybody else, I was aware of the, uh, the National Press Club presentations by homosexuals who claimed that they'd had sex with him. Uh, who knows? Uh, although one of them had a uh, uh, sort of a plausible case in that he had the phone number, the personal phone number of uh, the president's uh, cell phone. But that's far from dispositive. Right, well, so let's stop there. I mean, I have your phone number and I could claim to have had sex with you. That wouldn't be proof of anything, right? No, I agree. Okay, very good. But now, now the next thing is uh, Obama is uh, a smart fellow. And here you have a situation in which, if anything, he should have just stepped back politically and allowed himself to evolve after the election. Instead, he took what I would consider to be, and I think a lot of commentators consider to be, an enormous risk coming out for something that quite clearly the majority of Americans do not approve of. And usually politicians shy away from that. That's why he was evolving. Well, let's take, it, let's take a break there for a second because I have a couple follow-ups there. Number one, when we do look at polls for what Americans do and don't agree with, this really isn't about Obama because it's about a 50-50 split whether Americans think that we should have gay marriage. But that being said, do doesn't that actually say something positive about the president? That independently of what polls say, this is what he believes is right. So he came out for it. Shouldn't we be applauding that? I don't think so. Oh. Uh, given, given that... I don't think it is 50-50. Yes, you're right. The polls seem to suggest that. Right. But you look at the electorate, and that those are the folk that actually go to the polls. It's uh, no worse than 55-45, and probably worse than that because uh, this is now a sensitive issue, and a lot of people who, in the privacy of their vo uh, voting booth, will vote against it, will say, "Well, yeah, I'm in favor," and so forth. So the fact given that President that, given that, every, every everybody in politics knows this. Uh, Obama took a flyer. Now the question is why? And if you look at Hollywood, and now they're going full tilt with the notion that homosexuality has to be a part of almost every sitcom, every drama, blah, blah, blah. So when you say, uh, al hold on, let's stop there. When you say sure. almost every sitcom, that would suggest certainly a plurality. May I don't know your definition of almost every, but maybe that's 80, 85%. Can you list no. which sitcoms homosexuality is a big part of? Uh, no, I'm talking about the, the upcoming, the upcoming uh, series of uh, we're going to try it. And of course, we have American Family and all that kind of business. But so that's one. Okay. If you look, if you if you stand back and look at, uh, I watch TV some, and I have been impressed uh, with how much homosexuality and homosexual content is now part of standard fare. Okay, and but I think we're getting off topic here, though. I think we're because so far you've okay, named let's one. Go back, let's go back. Let's go back to Obama. Yeah. What, so, so all we here, have here, to here. Ev evidence that he's gay is someone who has his phone number, said they had a sexual encounter, and in spite of the polls, he supports gay marriage. So therefore, he's gay. No, I, I say that the plausibility is growing from the standpoint that take the Denver Post. Okay. It's filled with homosexual writers, and for it. 
it appears it's almost turned into a gay rights paper that also happens to cover other news. What are their names? Now, uh, that, that's part of the reason why it's losing uh, popularity. I think it's going to lose more. And what you find is Aren't homosexuality is an unusual sin or an unusual habit. That is, it's a 24-7. It's just, I can't shut up about it. It's homosexuality all the time. Okay, so again, what does the Denver Post have to do with the president being gay? It has a lot to do with the Post, which used to be, if you looked at it 10 years ago, for instance, you would see a paper that was like most liberal papers. And now it is almost honed in on homosexuality. Okay. That's an example of how I think uh, Obama is disproportionately putting his uh, political chances and his rhetoric in tow to homosexuality. Okay, but Dr. Cameron, so you're pointing, I, I have to interrupt though, I have to interrupt. You're completely obsessed with homosexuality, but n uh, does that mean that you are gay? I mean, the Denver Post writing about homosexuality means Obama is gay. I've never heard anything like this. No, it's not. I, I'm, I'm giving you a reason why I think it's more and more plausible. Now, if you look at his church, where he went to church with, uh, uh, with Wright and so forth, um, hmm. and then if you look at his connections with Hollywood, as Liz Taylor said, Without gays, there is no Hollywood. And as Corey Feldman recently came out, uh, uh, the whole institution is rife riddled <laughs> okay. with homosexuality. All right, so, so I think I see where we're going. I, I, I do have, I, all, I have, that, all that makes more sense. Yeah, I have other things I want to get to, so I think we get that one. So let's go to the next one. Uh, why do you think the homosexual movement wants to make, quote, every little boy grab his ankles? And, and who would enforce that? Well, first of all, if you look at uh, California, a start is already being made to sanitize homosexuality and heroize some of its players. One of its heroes, Harvey Milk, uh, had relationships, we are sure, with at least one 16-year-old and apparently others uh, uh, by allusion uh, by his uh, biographers. So why now, would that mean that homosexuals would force every child to have anal sex? Well, it, it doesn't necessarily ah. lead to that, but what does happen is in those societies in which homosexuality gets a fair degree of prominence, for instance, Afghanistan, for instance, Pakistan, you have an enormous uh, trafficking in children, an enormous incorporation of children into homosexual activity, specifically the head of the Punjab, um, uh, Punjab is the largest uh, region. Yeah, but Dr. Cameron, Pakistan, what on earth does said this have to do with anything? Over half of all the children there are molested by their teachers. That has nothing to do with homosexuality, sir. That has nothing to do with, that has to do with the socioeconomic situation there. This is not about people being gay. You're, you're talking about something different. But again, we go back to this focus that a lot of anti-gay activists like you have on anal sex. What about all the men who don't have, gay men who don't have anal sex? And what about lesbians? There's not a word about those, just a fixation on the minutia of anal sex from you and Brian Fisher and all of these people. I don't get it. You know more about it than most gay people I know. I'm sorry, uh, that's not true. Oh. Uh, it's true that oh. there are few, uh, there are a few homosexuals, uh, probably 20-ish percent or so, who do not regularly participate in uh, anal sex. And uh, certainly there are some, as near as we can tell, that have never done it. Okay. They're, a minor they're definitely a decided minority. If you'll look at, uh, like, the Sandusky situation, if you'll look at, as I said, Pakistan, where you have a very large grouping, if you look at the history of pederasty in those countries and times and climes where you've had homosexuality generally accepted, by George, you see... Not every little boy, but generally speaking, boys being molested uh, disproportionately across the spectrum. Okay, well, I think, you know, we've, we've talked about this before, and I don't want to belabor it, but we're going to have right. a fundal, fundamental disagreement that 
I don't believe that those who are interested sexually in prepubescent minors are uh, gay or straight as their primary driver. They are mentally ill, right? Pedophilia is a mental illness, and it has nothing to do with gay or straight. With Sandusky, it well could have been a course of convenience, right? He was in locker rooms with young boys, not young women, and that's what it was about. But I want to get to something uh, well, else. I, you... I, I, I disagree. I know you do. I think we're looking at a mental illness here. I think we're looking at nothing less or more than a sexual taste a sexual taste which is very, very injurious to children. Okay. Um, what, do you believe that it's a choice to be gay? It's a choice to, be, to act on your desires. Okay. Can, is it a choice? Then let, let me follow up then. Do, can one choose... Can, if I act on them, that's my choice. Go can on. one choose who they are attracted to? I Probably not so much as if you fixate on it. If, uh, like, let's talk about King David. He looked out and he saw a good-looking bride. And he didn't have to then think about it, invite her in, blah, 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 you know, the whole deal. Right. And most men, if they will think about something sexual, they will end up trying to do something either with that person or something approximating it. So uh, we know men. You're a man. I'm a man. If a man thinks on something in his heart, by George. It's amazing. Almost all the time, he'll get somewhere close to what he wants to do. Okay, but so then I need to. We need to clarify. Uh, what one can or cannot control whether they they feel attracted to men or women. Can one control that? Uh, to a very large degree, yes. So could yes. you choose then? Could you choose to feel an attraction to men? Could you do that? At my age, it's improbable. Okay. At, at what age could you do it then? All people, I'm talking about adolescent boys and young adults, they can choose and often do choose. Now, so I what age were you? Who age, were yeah. middle-aged who had some success in reorienting their choices. Completely bogus and debunked. Yeah, reparative gay therapy. We know about that. What age were you? No, no, no. I'm what not age, Dr. Thurman, what age were you when you decided, I'm going to evaluate men and evaluate women, and I'm going to choose for the rest of my life, I will be attracted to women. How old were you when you did that? Well, I didn't do that so much consciously. Oh. I reacted to my environment. As you're probably aware, I was seduced or raped uh, as a child. I was about three. And uh, I was uh, raped homosexually. And so had that continued, I don't know where I would have uh, ended up. But I do know that the culture, which was directed toward heterosexuality, overcame whatever feelings I had. And I had some that uh, I acquired as a three-year-old. And by the time I was, uh, say, um, eight or nine or ten, I was thoroughly interested in girls. But because Dr. Cameron, with, 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 with all due respect, don't mm -hmm. you think that if we combine these attractions that you just stated you had to men when you were very young, combined well, with the fact boy, that your but, entire but, life you have focused on homosexuality, sex between men, a, a, to, to a degree that almost no one I've ever come across, handful of, you know, except a handful of people, isn't it possible that, that you are gay? <laughs> well, it's impossible. I am, uh, no one, gay is kind of a political term. Oh. Am I interested in homosexual relations? Not at all. I don't, on a scale of one to a hundred, it's zip. And um, as a matter of fact, uh, as I've dealt with people who have this uh, affliction or this desire or this interest, uh, if anything, I'm repelled by it. I'm probably about a minus a hundred. Okay, well, it's, a, it's a, a, a fascinating discussion. Dr. Paul Cameron is chairman of the Family Research Institute. I think all we're going to be able to agree upon is that we have just done a 10-minute interview. Beyond that, I don't know that we can agree on much, but I appreciate the conversation. You bet. Okay, thank you so much.